Hello and welcome to Lakeshore Academy. Today I am going to be talking to you about, this is going to be my new little video edition. I'm going to call it Let's Talk. And basically it's just what it says, Let's Talk. And I'm, and I'm going to be talking about various different um, topics and stuff of that nature. So this is a topic that I think that needs to be addressed. The issue of, because how this came about, I'm on another homeschooling group and I showed um, how I got my child fun basket together and a mom asked me, well, Tina, how does your schedule look? How does your schedule look for your eighth grader? So I said, well, instead of me just typing it and telling you how I do it, I just take a picture and let you look at it. So I took a picture and let her look at it. And then I realized, I realized, I said, well, I need to explain to her what some of this stuff means on my child's schedule and, and particularly the one-on-one -on -one time. And so after I explained it to her, she was like, thank you so much. I never really thought about that. And she said, "From I'm really going to look, I'm going to incorporate this one-on-one -on -one time in with my children. So basically the one-on-one -on -one time that I have in my schedule for my children for the week when we do homeschooling, I have two children. So like if I'm doing one-on-one -on -one time with my daughter during a certain block period, I do one-on-one -on -one time with my son Tuesday. They on alternate days. Like my daughter is Monday, my son Tuesday, daughter Wednesday. My daughter is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My son is Tuesday and Thursday, but he get a little extra time because he don't get the third day. He just get the two days because we're doing a five week schedule. I mean, five day schedule. I'm sorry. So basically what I do in the one on one time, you would think that with us homeschooling our children, that they're getting all the nurturing, all the love, all the time that they need. However, that is not the case. Yes, we do spend roughly 99% of our day with our children every single day because we homeschool. And they see us every single day if you're the one who homeschools. But you're homeschooling not just them. If they have other siblings, you're homeschooling their other siblings. If they have other relatives that lives in the home with you, you're homeschooling that entire family, plus doing your regular day-to-day -day things that you have to do in life. So one thing that I noticed that I started doing last year, I started incorporating this one-on-one -on -one time. Now this one-on-one -on -one time is, what I do it with the one-on-one -on -one time is that it's geared towards that child, whatever that child want to do. So if my daughter want to watch a movie or she want to watch a TV show or she want to draw or she just want to talk or she want to um, cook something, whatever she wants to do on that one-on-one -on -one time. If she wanted to work on, need extra help on something she wanted, that she was doing during the weekend, she need extra help. Whatever it is that she wants to do, that's what we do during that one-on-one -on -one time. Now, my son, the same thing. Whatever he wants to do during his one-on-one -on -one time with me by myself, this is individual time by ourselves, individualized in a whole, not one-on-one -on -one time where I spend and they're in the room with their other sibling. No, one-on-one -on -one time where it's just me and that child and they get my full undivided attention. And that shows them that they're worth, that they're worth it that you really, we know that we love our children, but it's showing them that extra added attention. It's giving them that good self-worth. It's giving them that attention that they thrive for. It's giving them that safety net. It's giving them that just help build their confidence because, hey, they see mom or dad or whoever homeschooling doing all these various different things and yet they're taking time out their schedule just to designate just their time you and their the time with that child and you together and they really appreciate that and i have really seen how this has really helped me with my daughter and my son they are more open with me we talk more they express themselves more freely 
and it's just really a great bonding experience. I mean, sometimes we, I mean, it's just a great bonding experience. So I would encourage anyone who is homeschooling and it will, it is going to be a little difficult, especially if you have more than one or two children, um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but you don't have to have these long stretches of time. It could just be 10 minutes just with that one child. 15, 20, 30 minutes. It don't have to be a long extended period of time. It just has to be just a, a small amount of time that's designated for that child that you're giving them your undivided attention and it's only about that particular child. They will thrive. They will love it. And um, you will really bond. You will really get to know the inner the inner person of your child because they will be more open with you. And that has been my experience. That's why I'm telling um, you about it. And another thing is that, um, I, I, I don't know. It's just, just that one-on-one -on -one time is just great. And a uh, one important thing, don't forget yourself. When you're scheduling all this one-on-one -on -one time, if you have more than one child, don't forget to schedule you a 10, 15 minute, 20, 30 minute downtime. I call it my downtime where I go in a room, I close the door, I watch a movie, not a movie. I watch maybe a 20 minute show or I listen to some, some common music or whatever I need. Read a book or for a small period of time, eat something that I really wanted to eat and really enjoy <laughs> So I just let the kids say, okay, it's mommy's downtime um, for 15, 20 minutes. If only come if you need me for an emergency, mommy just need her 15 minutes, her 20 minutes to get downtime. And then I come back and we'll do whatever we need to do. So usually what I do when I have my downtime, I have them working on something else for school and I'll go and something that they can do independently. And then when they're doing their independent work, I go and have my downtime and that helps me to take, to stay focused, to be able to give them the best of me and not just giving them the scraps, if you know what I mean, because we're doing so much as moms. And even if you're a dad that's homeschooling or grandma or grandpa, we're doing so much. We have our hand in so many different areas. We got to, we have to homeschool. We have to work. We have to, uh, do things outside the home. It's so many things that we have to do that it's so important that we take care of ourselves as well. Cause we're constantly giving ourselves to everyone else and we're not doing anything for us. And, and that's how it, and that's how you get burnt out by not taking some time for yourself. So the best advice I can tell you about this one-on-one -on -one time is to definitely do it with your child on an individual basis and cater it to that child, but also schedule you. 15, 20, 30 minutes times or however long you need in order to get yourself back centered, back relaxed, de-stressed, and so you won't lose your joy. And it's been working excellent for me. So I hope this helped you out as well that this school year, 2017, 2018 school year will be the best homeschool year ever by doing these tips. I really think it will help you because it's helping me and I'm not anything different. So it's helping me and I really think it can help you whether you have one or two children or multiple children, this method will help and will work. I feel strongly because it's helping with me and I'm one of the, I'm a type A personality, so I'm easy to get stressed because I'm always trying to do stuff. So if it helped me, I feel like it can help you too. So have a good day. Bye.